Welcome to the Brian Wright Audio Experience, a podcast dedicated to helping entrepreneurs grow their business, make more money, and successfully navigate through the chaos of life, all while working, spending, and stressing less. And now your host, he's a husband, a father of two, an international business and life coach, and a trusted motivational speaker for some of the most respected companies in the world, such as Invisalign and many others. Brian Wright. Hey, everybody. Welcome inside the broadcast booth to the fourth episode of season one of The Brian Wright Show. Hope you're doing great out there. If you're watching over on our YouTube station, hey there. Hope you are doing great as well. Just getting back from Detroit. Went up to see a customer, Ashley Reynolds, up there. Had a great couple days doing some cooking at the house, some team building, some some sales training, some marketing training. Uh, went really great. It's good seeing all of your faces out there, longtime customers. So, Always nice getting back up to Detroit. So my family, I'm not. I was born and raised in Houston, Texas, but basically my whole family is from Michigan. The Bloomfield Hills area, Ann Arbor, uh, Bay City, uh, Marine City, and other places as well. So I grew up as a kid going to Michigan Wolverine football games. So if you're an Ohio State fan out there, don't don't hate us. Don't automatically turn off. <laughs> don't turn off the podcast. Uh, or a state fan, et cetera. But uh, no, seriously, just growing up, I, I didn't go to school. I actually went to University of Maryland is where I went to college. But definitely Michigan football and just, you know, Michigan brainwash. We used to have, and family still does have a tailgate spot um, in Ann Arbor before the games. Uh, been a long time since I've been to a game, but it used to be a, a once or twice uh, thing growing up. So it's always good to get back to that area. Ashley Reynolds' business uh, she's actually an orthodontist, so her practice is about 20 minutes outside of Ann Arbor in the, uh, I think the South Lions area is what it's called, but really good trip, and looking forward to a good one today. Today, we're going to be talking a little hiring strategy, but this is more for once you've hired. What we're going to be talking about today regarding the Navy SEALs Team 6 and how you get to be on Navy SEALs Team 6. If you have not heard of Team 6, uh, all of you have probably heard of the Navy SEALs, of course. Team six is like the, you know, the mission impossible form of the Navy SEALs. It is a, the above and beyond it is the elite of the elite. It is the top of the top. And it's hard enough, obviously, making the Navy SEALs. But to get on to Navy SEALs Team Six, it's even a whole nother universe. And I'm going to talk about that universe today. And it is going to help you from a hiring standpoint. But inevitably, I want you to look in the mirror. And I also want you to identify who are the employees that I'm talking about today. Because the ones who make, you know, for years I've studied uh, the culture and the leadership traits of the finest organizations in the world. And I've created, based on that, Uh, I've learned a lot, and it's how I run from a leadership standpoint. It's how I run all of my companies um, across the globe. It's from from New Patient Group to Right Chat uh, to the Right Institute to BJW Enterprises, uh, et cetera, to Right Sports, et cetera, et cetera. I always start and look at the leadership traits and look at myself in the mirror. Today is one of these things where you're going to be able to identify and look at your team very differently than you have before. There are some hiring mistakes but also beyond the hiring mistakes. So like I said, some of the things I'm going to talk about today is going to be very hard to identify that during the interview process. People are very good at lying. Uh, and, and it's just, it's going to be very hard. And you'll see in a minute, I'm going to walk you through an exercise that I'm going to want you to do to where you can identify this. And I would also like you to walk through the same exercise with your team, have each team member do what I'm going to describe today and see how much they align with what you align with. So as you, and when, when I talk about this today, you're going to realize some of the things uh, that you probably already knew uh, but this is hopefully going to kick you in the butt. You know, having a great culture can take a a person and turn them into greatness. Having a poor culture can take a person that is actually would be a really good employee and turn them into a very low level employee. Okay, so you can't just say, "Hey, here are my good ones. Here are my bad ones." You have to first look at what kind of culture are you creating. Are you creating a culture? Are you putting them in a position of success? Are you creating a culture where they can thrive, where they feel safe? where you're empathetic. If all those things, and obviously a lot more in place, you can really look in an honest way of what employees need to go, what employees need to stay, what positions you have. Uh, Maybe you have Betty, make-believe name, in the wrong position. One of the best traits, and this is not what today's about, but one of the best traits of the finest coaches in all sports at all levels is they put their players in a position of success. Right? If you have a person that is not comfortable hitting leadoff, 
just because you as a coach want that person there, that's not the position that they are going to thrive in. Right, So today is a really cool one that I go all over the world talking about it, and I have several exercises that I do on stage. As a matter of fact, I did this exercise just coming back. I was in Tampa speaking for Invisalign uh, not too long ago, a few weeks ago. I think in the first or second podcast uh, this season, I talked about that trip. And inevitably, what we're going to be looking at today, and I'm going to put a screenshot if you're watching over on YouTube and you actually want a visual of this, um, I'm going to put a screenshot up while I'm talking about this. But you can imagine a diagram and going up along the le- off the left side, uh, you have performance, and across the bottom, you have trust. And you know the Navy SEALs are are very interesting if you study them and read books about them and watch videos and just read online. It is really incredible uh, who makes it because it's very rarely the person that you would think makes it. You know, the one with the big muscles, and you know they're walking around like the stud, and they're the strongest. And all that, rarely do those people make it, right? A lot of times, it's the scrawny guy, uh, the scrawny girl, you know, it, it, and you're like, how can that person, how can that person make the Navy SEALs, let alone the best of the best of the Navy SEALs, the Navy SEALs Team 6, all right? So you've got performance going up here, and then in the chart, if you're watching on YouTube, what, what I'm doing across the bottom is the trust. Now, what's the difference, okay? Performance uh, let's say you're a restaurant out there, okay, listening. Here's a, just an example for you. Performance would be a waiter that is really good with the tables, right? They're good at articulating your your specials for the evening to get people to buy those rather than something off the menu. They're good at uh, articulating your wine menu in a way where people feel really special at the table and they buy the $150 bottle of wine instead of the glass of the same thing. And by the way, restaurant owners, we are going to have several podcasts where I'm going to be using examples with you because it is my favorite customer to work with. It is a absolute blast uh, to work with restaurants, but it is a transformative thing that we teach inside restaurants to get people to buy more while feeling really awesome doing it along the way. All right, so take that waiter that's really, really good on the floor, okay? That's performance. You take uh, an orthodontic practice where where my company, New Patient Group, and Right Chatter, and if you've listened to past podcasts, and you take a, a, a girl in the back uh, that's a great clinical assistant, and she's good chair side with the doctor. She knows the protocols. Her hand skills are good. She knows what instrument goes with what. Boom, that is a good performer. They're good on the field. You take an athlete and they have a high batting average or they're really good on the court, uh, the basketball court, really good in the football field. That is a high performer. Okay. That has something to do with performance. Now you take trust. Okay. Trust is something completely different. All right. And the way the Navy SEALs like to talk about this is performance is, is can I trust you with my life? Okay. So you think about performance really inevitably can guy A trust girl B with his life whenever the you know what is hitting the fan? That is performance. Now, over on the trust side, they describe that as now, can I trust you with my wife? Okay, you have to, can I trust you with my life? And over across the bottom again with that trust is, can I trust you with my wife? All right, so trust is all about the things that are really unmeasurable, you know, the, the culture. Uh, how good of a leader you are uh, amongst the group. Are you going to go the extra mile for somebody? And this, you go back to the same examples. You know, you have the waiter that's clock out time. Does that waiter ask anybody else, hey, is there anything I can help you with before I clock out, right? How is that waiter, it, whenever the, the patrons, whenever the customers are not there and you're having you know, restaurant team meetings, how is that person amongst everybody else? Same thing in the orthodontic practice. You know, how, how is that person off the field in the locker room? And really, there's so many sports analogies that you can tie to life and business. But really, inevitably, to make this very easy is performance is that athlete that's great on the field and trust is the athlete that's great in the locker room. Now, very rarely do you find both. And when you do, that's certainly a rock star. Now, again, looking at my hands over on YouTube, you've got the performance going up. How good are you on the field? And you've got trust going along the bottom. How good are you in the locker room, right? How are you helping others get better? Now, the very first box that comes up or circle diagram that comes up on this chart in the lower, uh, lower left-hand corner 
is the low performer, low trust, right? That's obviously an employee that nobody wants in their business because not only do they suck on the field, they also suck in your locker room, right? So they suck with your life and they also suck with your, with your wife. So they're really not good at anything. Okay, now in the opposite, in the upper right-hand corner, you have the high performer with low trust, okay? They are absolutely amazing. Excuse me. Up in the upper right-hand corner is the high performer with high trust, right? That's the employee that everybody wants. That's the athlete that everybody wants, right? Is someone that is amazing on the field and also amazing inside the locker room, right? They're a fantastic performer. Maybe they're the highest scorer on your team, but they're also amazing in the locker room, making other people better. Now, if you listen to the previous podcast, one of the reasons I am doing this episode is this is a good follow-up to the leadership question that I talked about before is, are you making other people better? If you are, you're a leader. You don't necessarily have to be in a quote unquote manager role, a boss role, a leader role. You could be the quote unquote lowest on the totem pole in your whole organization. But if you are doing your best to help other people thrive in their life and their career, et cetera, you are a leader. In fact, you are more than a leader than somebody that is in a quote unquote leadership role and runs a team that isn't making other people better. Leadership is not a, is not a title. It's what you do. It's a skill set that you can learn. So I thought this would be good because that high performer, high trust, that is somebody that is great at what they do every single day for your business but they're also making other people in your organization better. And that is your rock star. Now, they're few and far between, but if those are people in your orthodontic practice, your restaurant, your plumbing company, your law firm, your marketing company, you know, your website design firm, whatever it may be, your consulting company and the coach, you know, being a coach out there. And by the way, if you're a consultant and or a coach out there, or a combination of both, this will be a great podcast for you. Wonderful. Because my new patient group company over in orthodontics, and like I said, in episode one, we do other doctors as well, but it's ones that own a business, right? They've got to teach their team how to sell. They've got to get you to call them. They've got to have a great culture because they're running people. They've got to train. It's all the same things that go on inside there as it is a restaurant and plumber and any other people business. So that high performer, high trust, that's the person everybody wants. But just back really quick, I got off track, but I'm going to say if you're a consulting company, this is a great podcast to listen to because I took a consulting company and a digital marketing company and put it under one roof in orthodontics and we had no relationships. And now we're a multi-million dollar company with the biggest names as customers speak for Invisalign, other companies all over the world. This is the recipe on how you make any business successful by stop listening to the bull crap on that you have to have high advertising dollars or pay-per-click and all this stuff, you don't need it. Today is another example of what you really need. You need a special team, just like the Navy SEALs Team 6, just like any sports organization. You need a special team. And in order to have a special team, you must have an exceptional culture through extraordinary leadership, which inevitably is what today is about. Now, over on the top left, okay, so you've got all the way up the performance aisle, but all the way in the low corner or the low aisle on the trust, all right? So you have a high performer with low trust. This means in the Navy SEALs team world is that this is the person that is amazing on the battlefield. You can trust this person with your life, but you cannot trust this person with your wife, okay? Or anything else off the battlefield for that matter, okay? This is the athlete in sports that is really good on the field and in the locker room sucks and makes everyone else's performance go down. Back before we moved to Colorado Springs, this is years ago, I had a basketball group in Houston that I played with. And it was, it was kind of the same core guys, but we would have others come and go and you never know exactly who showed up. And we would play, you know, nine, 12 hours a week. And I didn't realize, so... When we moved from our one house in Houston where I had the basketball group to another house across 45 minutes, I didn't realize how much of a release basketball was because when we moved, I lost the group and never did find another one. So I went five or six years and didn't play. Now back in Colorado Springs, 
I found a group. It's actually a guy we're actually going to go to dinner tonight with. Actually, has a full court basketball uh, court in his in his basement. So we go there a couple times a week, and it's a great group of guys so far. But when I had that basketball team back home or that basketball group back home, I found over the course of time that I would always play well with a group when they were on my team, and I always, almost always, did not play well with another one. And the difference was is it was not because the other team didn't have high performers. In fact, they were more talented than the team that I played well with, and we usually won. Right. And the difference was, is the high performing team, the one I didn't play as well with, um, they were very ball hoggish. Um, they wouldn't get the ball to me in my spots. I like to work the low post and and mimic growing up, you know, went to a lot of Houston Rockets games, try to mimic Elijah on on the court. And obviously, obviously I can't. But that's what I try to do. And I'm a pretty good low post player. So if you get the ball where I want it, we're going to have success. But it also, other people, you know, you got to bring in a double team and then I'm going to pass. We're going to have a wide open shot somewhere. And we work together as a team, even though we had lower performers, we had high trust with each other. And therefore, our winning record was very good. This other team had high performers, but it was a low trust situation. Okay, and that is something that is so, so difficult because the high performer with low trust, all of you have that person out there. I see it a lot of times in orthodontic practice. This is Betty that's really good with the patient, but absolutely sucks with her team members. This is Joe, who's the superstar on the baseball field, but absolutely sucks in the clubhouse. This is your plumbing company, your restaurant, your law firm, your et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, your real estate company, yeah, whatever. I could list out, obviously, millions of businesses, right? Web design firm, et cetera, is that you've got the person that's actually pretty darn good with your customer, pretty damn good at what they do, but they absolutely suck with the rest of the team. They cannot be trusted, and therefore, they bring down the performance of your other team members. This is somebody, everybody, this is a hard fire. Okay. This is a hard fire to make, but that is the most toxic employee you can ever have in your organization. The one that is great on the battlefield, but sucks off the battlefield. The one that you can trust with your life, but not your wife. That is somebody that you must tomorrow let go of your organization or find a plan B to hire other people. All right. That is your toxic and empo- that is your toxic employee. Now, what are some other areas? And that, by the way, you look at it and you're like, the Navy SEALs would rather trust somebody that even though, hey, I can trust this person with my life, but not my wife, they don't want that person. And the reality is they do not want that person. And nor does any famous company in this world is this is the recipe of a fantastic culture. Is this the only ingredient? Of course not. There's thousands of ingredients, and we're going to be talking about thousands of ingredients on this podcast, as well as all kinds of other stuff. But this, everyone says, I need out advertising. This is one of the things that I flip with business owners on their head. This is advertising, and this is how you have to look at it. This is another form of marketing your business, is what we're talking about. This exercise is what team members do you have and what the hell are they doing when you're not looking? That is advertising because every interaction you and your team have with a to-be prospective customer or a repeat buyer, so an existing customer, that is your brand awareness. It is not what you do outside your doors. Now, that's part of it. But small business owners especially, your brand awareness is created with every interaction you have with people. If they call your business and you don't answer, you suck because you're just like everybody else. That's brand awareness. If they call and they need help and they've got to be transferred to 12 departments and repeat themselves every time, you suck from a brand awareness standpoint. Okay, if they come in contact with with a poor culture, people can feel this when they walk inside your restaurant, when they walk inside your law firm, etc. All of this goes beyond the importance of what it is you sell, your product, your service, whatever the hell it is. Your culture trumps it all. How you train your people to interact and how you make people feel trumps it all. The organic presence that you have online with your YouTube station, restaurants, you should have a live feed in your, in, in your kitchen. You should have your chef make a new video every week for YouTube and send it out to people that have dined with you before. This is your brand. 
and the way you hire, keeping toxic employees, which so many of you out there do. I can't find anybody or I don't know what I'm going to do if Betty leaves, make believe name. Well, the reality is the other side is always better than keeping somebody that is good with your customers, but an asshole to your team members and or even you. So the other two squares, the other two diagrams that pop up on this chart, okay, is your medium performer and high trust. So this is all the way, this one sits in the middle of the performance aisle diagram, but all the way down at the end on the trust. So they're pretty good on the field, right? They're pretty good on the football field. They're pretty good. Uh, they're a pretty good waiter. They're a pretty good sous chef. They're a pretty good plumber. They're a pretty good receptionist. They're a pretty good um, financial presentation person. If you're a business that presents money to people, I can't wait to get into those topics on here. But they're pretty good. They're not great. They're not the best of all time. Um, but they're pretty good. But you know what? They have high trust, baby. The employees love them. Your customers love them. And off the field, they are exceptional. So again, performance. Okay, right? Pretty good sometimes, most of the time. But man, oh man, when you're not looking, they're going to bust their ass. They're going to do everything they can to make you successful. They're going to help other people get better. They're going to pass the ball into the post where I like it, right? Get the analogy. They're going to put the ball, or if you miss a shot, they say, hey, Brian, keep shooting it, baby. You're going to get it. Keep firing up. They don't say, hey, stop shooting it, dude. You're not making it. I'm going to take the ball from you, right? Again, high trust. I equate the medium performer and high trust to the role player in sports. You know, every organization needs role players, right? Everybody can't be a superstar, but the role player usually is somebody that absolutely works their butt off. They work as hard, if not harder than anybody. They're always doing whatever it needs. They come off the bench in basketball or they start, you know, they'll hit eighth or they'll hit second. They'll do whatever it takes to help the team. And they put their ego aside. They're helping other people get better through their work ethic, asking them, hey, look, Joe, I'm done for the day. Is there anything I can help you with before I leave? Right? They may uh, be a, show empathy. If, if Susie's down for the day, they may take Susie aside and say, Susie, are you OK? Just notice that you're sad today. And I was just seeing if there's anything I can do for you. You cannot have an organization that is filled with enough of those type of people. Employees watching. This is why this show is for employees too. Because if you want to take your career to an entirely different level, does it help if you get better at your performance on the field? You know, yeah, of course it does. Nobody's saying don't do that. Of course, the better you get on the basketball court, the better you get waiting tables, the better you get at cooking food, the better you get at your plumbing skills, the better lawyer you are, the better um, receptionist you are for the legal firm you are, the better at presenting money you are to make the business grow. Of course, all those things are, are, are important. Those are things that we absolutely are going to teach on this podcast and things that you absolutely should want to thrive in. But all of them are secondary. All of them are secondary to the things that we can't measure. See, the other thing is the low performer, high trust. This is the person that's just not that good, right? But man, oh man, they are still helping other people get better. They are showing up early, leaving late. They never ask for anything, no matter how hard they work. They will do whatever it takes to help you succeed. And see, the ironic thing about the medium performer and the low performer with medium, or excuse me, both with high trust, is there aren't any metrics that judge this. See, this is the problem in business. You know the metrics, so the high performer, low trust, that person, you can measure their performance, right? It could be through sales quotas. They're always hitting their sales quota, right? They're always at the top of their sales team, but they're at ass to everybody else on the team. See, you can't measure how much being a jerk to the other people on the team is hurting the sales on everybody else's part, right? All you can measure is, hey, Joe is really good at sales. I mean, he's leading the team again this quarter. Boy, he's a great employee. No, he's not. He's only a great employee is if he's helping other people get better. He's, he's again, being empathy, showing empathy when the time matters. He's only good if he's showing up late or showing up early, leaving late because he's helping other people finish their tasks that they made and not have got around to. You get the point. Is Joe helping build a culture that will forever create a situation where your business dominates year in and year out without the unnecessary pay-per-click 
advertising other bull crap expenses that just aren't needed. They're nice as an added bonus. But again, as I teach all over the world, if advertising is what you think is going to make your business, you suck inside your doors. This is the whole, I'm going to hire more sales force than customer service people to take care of my customers. No, be the business that over hires to take care of your customer, under hires to take care of new potential business. And if you do that, your customer becomes your sales force. But all of this, we have so many metrics that measure performance, but we have basically nothing that measures the number one thing that the Navy SEALs Team 6 go by when they bring people aboard and decide whether or not that person is going to stay aboard, right? All the things, culture, leadership, innovation, self-improvement, you know, looking in the mirror when times are tough, wondering how you can get better. And the things go on and 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 on. The things that we can't see, the things that we can control, though, there's no metrics for. And that is what you have to build your entire organization around, are the things that you can control. You can control being a good leader when times are tough or when times are going well. You can build a better culture. You can train your team in a unique way. You can do exceptional organic digital marketing content where you put your face in front of a phone. These are things that you can control. You can control self-improvement. You can control looking in the mirror. You can control innovation. You can control self-awareness. You can control empathy. You can control all of these things, and that needs to be the main focus because that's the main focus of the finest, finest running organization on the planet, the Navy SEALs Team 6. It's more about trust and the things you can control than it is about performance and the things you can't control. You can't control revenue, production, whether or not a customer calls you, whether or not you convert that customer, whether or not uh, Joe is leading your sales force this month, but not next month. You can't control it. But all the things that you can control are the things that inevitably get the uncontrollables to come up, especially when times are tough, down economy, COVID, whatever the hell it may be. The recipe is not advertising. The recipe is constantly improving and kicking ass on the things that you can control. That is how you win. That is how you win when the economy is good, bad, ugly, and different, whatever it may be. Focus on the Navy SEALs way of hiring, firing, retaining employees. Build that culture through an exceptional team. And we all want the high performer with high trust. But the reality of the situation is those are few and far between in every industry. Look for the people that will do whatever it takes to be high trust, even if they may not be as good as Betty, because you can train them to get better, but it's very, very difficult to train them to have the mindset required to be high trust. I hope you enjoyed today. We'll come back with another one soon. Enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving week now coming up. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll be back before Thanksgiving with some more. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hey, Brian Wright here. Hope you enjoyed that episode and hope you are enjoying the Brian Wright Show overall. And if you could do me a favor and help spread the word. We have a very loyal fan base. I'm so proud of that and so appreciative. So if you could help build that organic following by sharing an episode with somebody would mean the world to us. As well as if you're watching on YouTube, if you could share those videos And also write us a five-star review about the podcast and whatever channel that you're listening to, whatever podcast outlet you're listening to. It would really mean a lot to me. And thanks so much for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.